This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Cremel Hair Tonic and Cremel Shampoo present the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. Now suppose we begin by calling on Mr. Holmes' biographer and friend, the genial Dr. Watson. We find him in his comfortable, firelit study, leaning back in his easy chair, ready to begin his story. The fire feels good tonight, doesn't it, Dr. Watson? Indeed it does, but sit down, Mr. Bell, sit down and let's get on with the story. You are in a hurry, aren't you? Well, I suppose I am. As a matter of fact, the adventure I'm going to relate was one of the most gruesome experiences I ever hoped to encounter. Perhaps I'd better not tell it after all. It brings up memories Oh, that, uh... come now, Dr. Watson. You're not going back on us now. You promised last week to tell us... Uh, what was the name of the story? The Adventure of the Devil's Foot. Or the Cornish Horror. The very thought of it makes my blood run cold. I can hardly wait, Dr. Watson. But first, men, I'd like to remind you about this famous modern trend in hair grooming, which is preferred among top-flight executives and America's most successful men. It's called Cremel Hair Tonic. One of the many reasons Cremel has become such a nationwide favorite is that it never plasters the hair down with sticky goo, which makes your hair and scalp feel so dirty. It never gives hair that old-fashioned, greasy, patent leather look. You see, Kreml is a very highly specialized hair tonic. It contains a unique and utterly different combination of hair grooming ingredients, which is found in no other hair tonic. That's why Kreml keeps unruly hair so neatly in place longer, with such a handsome, healthy-looking luster. What I especially like about Kreml is that after you use it, you can run your hand back over your hair, and your hair never feels sticky or dirty. No greasy film comes off on your hand. Yet Kreml hair keeps hair in perfect order throughout the busiest day, always looking so handsome and well-groomed. K-R-E-M-L, Kreml hair tonic. Now, Dr. Watson, how about the devil's foot or the Cornish horror? It was the spring of the year 1897. Holmes's iron constitution had shown some signs of giving way due to a particularly arduous and nerve-wracking winter. In March of that year, Dr. Moore Agar of Harley Street gave positive injunctions that Holmes get out into the country for a protracted rest. Well, the third week in March found us settled in a small cottage near Poldu Bay at the further extremity of the Cornish Peninsula. Isn't that rather a bleak country for convalescent, Dr. Watson? Bleak is putting it mildly. I've never known such grim surroundings, but it suited Holmes admirably. He seemed to blossom in that weird and foreboding fog-swept district. Just as natural perverseness, I suppose. Oh, I dare say. Our little whitewashed cottage stood on a grassy headland. From its windows, we looked down upon the whole sinister semicircle of Mounts Bay, that old death trap, with its fringe of black cliffs and surge-swept reefs. In every direction, there were traces of some vanished race which had left as its sole record strange monuments of stone. Holmes spent most of his time pottering round these weird ruins... Everything was going along peacefully until one morning our simple and healthy routine was violently interrupted and we were precipitated into the middle of a series of gruesome and nerve-shattering events. Quite a surf this morning, eh, Watson? You can see the spray flung up against our windows and we're a good hundred feet above sea level. I don't think I shall venture out today. Hmm, bad weather. Old boy is certainly lashing himself into a fine frenzy. What do you mean, the old boy, Holmes? The devil, Watson. The devil himself. Oh, what are you raving about? Didn't I tell you that the natives hereabouts refer to that seething death trap down there as the devil's cauldron? They think the old gentleman himself lives there. How unsettling. Yes, a very interesting superstition. You know, Watson, this locality is supposed to have been the last resort of devil worship in England. Oh, really? Really? Many scientists believe that those huge prehistoric monuments of stone were part of a temple given over to the Prince of Darkness. Preposterous. Oh, I don't know. It's as logical as most of the theories that endeavor to explain their existence. The superstition goes on to say that when the devil was finally driven from his temple, he took refuge in the bay down there. Yes, 
They claim that on stormy nights you can hear his hoofbeats as he races up and down the rocks. Holmes, what are you trying to do? Give me a case of nerves. Hello, what's this? What's this? Someone is running up our path, his cloak clapping about like a giant bat. Why, it's that Tregenis fellow, the one who boards with the vicar. Mortimer Tregenis, eh? I wonder what's happened. Face as white as a sheet. Couldn't look more upset if he'd seen Beals above himself. Open the door, Watson. Mr. Holmes, thank heaven I find you at home. The most terrible thing has happened. I can scarcely believe it. Oh, sit down, my dear fellow, sit down. That's better. Now, perhaps you can tell us what has happened. My family, my, my sister, we were playing cards. Oh, slowly now, take your time. My family, my sister and my two brothers. It's too terrible. Why, just last night I was with them at the house. Tredanic warfare, it's called. All well and happy. We played cards. And now, without warning, I can't believe it. Easy, Tregenis, easy. There's a good fellow. I... I left them last night. My sister Brenda, my two brothers, Owen and George. What time was that? T the, the clock in the church steeple over at Polo was chiming ten o'clock as I closed the front door behind me. I'd left them all in the card room, laughing and in good spirits. And? This morning, being an early riser, I was out taking a walk before breakfast when... Dr. Richards overtook me in his carriage with the news that he'd been sent for and a most urgent call from Tredanic Warfare. Something terrible had happened to my family. I jumped in beside him and he whipped up the horses. And what did you find? Oh, Mr. Holmes, it was terrible, ghastly. My two brothers and my sister, there in the card room just as I'd left them. But what a change. What a ghastly change. Yes? Brenda lay back stone dead in her chair. And my two brothers sat on each side of her. Laughing and shouting and singing. The senses stricken clean out of them. And all three of them, my poor dead sister and my two demented brothers, retained upon their faces an expression of ghastly horror. A, a convulsion of terror. How terrible. Yes. Dr. Richard was so overcome at the sight that he fell fainting into a chair. Hmm. Anyone else in the house besides your sister and brothers? Only Mrs. Porter, the old housekeeper. I presume it was she who found them this morning. Yes. She always goes through the house in the mornings, adding it out before the family comes down. When she reached the card room, the shock was too much for her. She's had a nervous collapse. We had to put her to bed. No, no wonder. An exceptional case. Most exceptional. That's what we thought. We could find no traces of strangers in or around the house. Nothing was stolen. Nothing touched. The vicar believes you are the only one who can solve the case, Mr. Holmes. He insisted I come to you. I shall be only too glad to handle the matter, of course. But uh, first I must ask you a few questions. Anything, Mr. Holmes, anything. To begin with, Mr. Tregenis, why do you live with a vicar, separated from your family? Well, as a matter of fact, we had a slight argument a few years ago about some property it was. But that was all settled long ago. We were on the best of terms. Now, Mr. Tregenis, about last night... Uh, do you recall anything, uh, anything at all that was out of the ordinary? There was one thing that occurs to me. As we sat at the card table, my back was to the window. George was facing me. Suddenly I saw him look hard over my shoulder out of the window. I turned quickly, and just for a moment I thought I caught a glimpse of something, something moving. Man or animal? I don't quite know. My brother said he had the same feeling. It's uncanny, that's what it is. Something came into that room, and that something killed my sister and dashed the light of reason from my brother's mind. Something devilish it was. If that should prove to be the case, I fear I shall be of very little assistance, Mr. Tregenis. But short of wrestling with his satanic majesty, I think perhaps we can solve your problem. Come, Watson. We'd best go down to Tredanic Water at once. <laughs> This is the house, Mr. Holmes. Whose carriage is this coming down the drive with the blinds down? There's somebody in it. Listen. <laughs> My brothers. My poor brothers. It, it's Dr. Richard's carriage. He's taking them to Helston Asylum. It's too awful. My poor brothers. Easy, again. It's easy. Pull yourself together. I, I'll do my best. Good man. Which are the windows of the card room? Uh, this one here. Oh, look out, Holmes. You've upset the washing can. Dear, dear, how clumsy of me. Sorry, Tregenis. I'm afraid I've drenched your boots. But no matter, Mr. Holmes, no matter. Shall we go in? Yes. 
I have seen all I need to see out here. This way. The card room is over here. Do you notice anything, Watson? No, I can't say that I do. This is the card room. Hmm. I see the window's still open. The housekeeper left it that way, I presume? Yes, she says it was locked on the inside when she came in. Quite so. I think we may close it now. Well, I'll do it, Holmes. No, let me. Candles quite gutted out. Yes, uh, cards still on the table. They had not risen from their chairs, I take it, and you left at ten. That sets the hour of death at some time before eleven. Mm, fire burned out. Why fire? Had they always a fire in this small room on a spring evening? It was cold and damp last night, Mr. Holmes. The fire was lit shortly after my arrival. I see. Well, that... Seems to be about all. No disturbance of any kind. Strange. Oh, come along, Holmes. Come along. The room gives me the jumps. There's something about the atmosphere. As though death was still hovering in the air. I wonder. Come, Watson. We will return to our cottage. Should uh, anything occur to me, Mr. Tregenis, I shall communicate with you. <laughs> It won't do, Watson. It won't do. All the facts are negative. Well, do you think Mr. DeGennis' account of his actions last night was truthful? Quite, Watson. Quite. You remember the incident of the spilt watering can? I did that to obtain an impression of his foot. I take it you succeeded? I did. With that print as a sample, I was able to trace his movements last night. His story is correct. He left the house at about ten, went straight back to the vicarage and did not return. Nor did anyone else enter or leave that house. Then it uh, must have been the man or, or animal they, they thought they saw in the bushes. He must have returned and frightened them to death. There was no such man or animal, Watson. Last night was a dark night. Anyone who had the wish to frighten these people would be compelled to put his face against the glass before he could be seen. Well? There is a three-foot flower border outside the cardroom window. But there are absolutely no footprints there. Yes, but, but, but that means... It means... That... Mr. Tregenny's sister and her two brothers were alone when death struck the sister down and drove the brothers insane. But, Holmes, that would be supernatural. I hope not, Watson. Look, look, here I comes another not. visitor up our path. Stranger this time. Big, savage-looking fellow. That, my dear Watson, is none other than the famous Dr. Leon Sterndale. Sterndale, the lion hunter and explorer? Exactly. Oh, that's what he's doing in this neighborhood. Oh, I've heard he owns a little cottage about five miles down the coast. They tell me he lives there absolutely by himself when he isn't off on one of his expeditions. Never mind, Watson. I'll do the honors myself. Come in, Dr. Sterndale. Come in. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And this is my friend, Dr. Watson. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Holmes, I've come to you about the tragedy to Danick Walther. The police are utterly at a loss. You have a keener brain. Pardon me, Dr. Sterndale, but why are you so concerned in this affair? Well, you see, during my many residences in this locality, I've come to know the family of Tregenis very well. I see. Their, their horrible fate has been a great shock to me, Mr. Holmes. I'm so sorry. As a matter of fact, I was on my way to Africa. I got as far as Plymouth when the news reached me this morning. I came straight back to help in the inquiry. But uh, that would make you lose your ship. One sailed for Africa this afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. I can take the next. When did you last see the Tregenis family, Dr. Sterndale? I saw Brenda, uh, Miss Tregenis, three days ago. Just as I was leaving for Plymouth. Oh. So you have been in Plymouth for the last three days? Yes, in Plymouth. But how did you get the news so quickly? Surely the Plymouth papers didn't carry an account of the matter in this morning's edition? I received a telegram. A telegram? Might I ask from whom? You're very inquisitive, Mr. Holmes. It is my business, Dr. Sterndale. Very well. The telegram was sent by the vicar, Mr. Roundkey. I see. And now, Mr. Holmes, have you reached any conclusions? Conclusions? No. That would be a trifle premature. But I have every hope of bringing this matter to a satisfactory termination. Satisfactory to me, that is. Would you mind telling me if your suspicions point in any particular direction? I, uh... 
I do not feel that this is the moment to answer that question, Dr. Sterndale. Oh, and I see that I've been wasting my time. I need not prolong this visit. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hmm. Close mouth fellow, Dr. Sterndale, isn't he, Holmes? He told me more than he realized, Watson. But he knows even more. How could he if he was in Plymouth? But was he, Watson? That statement is something for us to look into. In just a moment, we'll rejoin Sherlock Holmes as he endeavors to solve the strange mystery of Sedanic water. But first, men... Remember, if you want to keep your hair handsome and healthy looking, one of the first requisites is a hygienic scalp. So why settle for just any hairdressing when you can enjoy the extra advantages of a highly specialized hair tonic like Cremel? Cremel contains a special combination of hair grooming ingredients which is found in no other hair tonic. This is why it keeps unruly hair neatly in place longer with a rich, healthy-looking luster. Yet Cremel never gives hair that cheap, greasy, patent leather look. It never leaves hair feeling sticky, gummy, or dirty. Your hair and scalp always look and feel so clean with Cremel. And if your hair is so dry it breaks and falls when you comb it, start using Cremel at once. Let it make your hair feel softer, more pliable, and look as if it had some body to it. Cremel is also fine to lubricate a dry scalp. At the same time, it removes dandruff flakes. A quick massage with Cremel helps stimulate the cutaneous circulation of the scalp. Notice how alive, how invigorated your scalp feels. So for better groomed hair, a more hygienic scalp, change to Cremel at once. Buy a bottle of Cremel at any drug counter. Ask for an application at your barber shop. K-R-E-M-L, Cremel Hair Tonic. <laughs> I say, Holmes, must you go on smoking that foul pipe? The atmosphere's so thick I can hardly see across the room as it is. Oh, dear, I feel depressed. Who knows what evil thing is stalking abroad in, in this neighborhood? Light the lamp, Watson. It's the gathering twilight that makes it gloomy. Rubbish. Look here, Holmes, what about that Dr. Sterndale? Do you think he did it? No, Watson. I've been in communication with his Plymouth Hotel. His story was correct. He had been there for the past three days, and he did receive a telegram from the vicar this morning. Oh, and he couldn't possibly have had anything to do with the Tuganis tragedy last night. Quite. I didn't think he had a connection with the tragedy. But there is a connection with... Now what? Mr. Holmes! Oh, Mr. Holmes! Open the door, Watson. Ah, my dear vicar, come in, come in. Dear me, you look as though you'd seen a ghost. It's tracked him down. The curse of the family. He's dead. Dead with that same look of terror on his face. Who's dead? Mortimer Trigenis. In his study at the vicarage. Great Scott. My servant found him there. Sitting beside his table. His face turned toward the window. And distorted with that same convulsion of fear that marked the features of his sister. Oh, my poor parish. Satan himself is loose among us. We are devil ridden, Mr. Holmes. Devil ridden. <laughs> This was his study, Mr. Holmes. Mm, depressing atmosphere. It was worse. I had the servant open the window. He's quite ill from shock, poor fellow. What a terrible look on Tregenis's face, Holmes. As the whole body is contorted and convulsed in a very paroxysm of fear. You've never seen death in this form before, Watson? No, never. You know of no poison that would have this effect? Good heavens, no. Hmm. The lamp is lit... It's burning over an hour. Notes the oil consumed. And yet, darkness has just set in. Did anyone call at the vicarage this afternoon? No. I was out myself, but my servant says he let no one in. Then Tregenis was alone when he... I wonder. The window was shut at the time of his death, but the lamp was lit. Curious. The window. Let's see. The window. Yes, by Jove, I think I found something. What's that you're putting in your pocket, Holmes? And the lamp. Of course, the lamp. Notice this powder which has been spilled on the base of the lamp? Red brown powder. Give me an envelope, Watson. I must have these specks of powder. Why are you so excited about the powder, Holmes? Because it contains the solution of our mystery, Watson. It is the source and the solution.
Holmes, you haven't touched your supper. Mm. What a foul night. The wind's rising again. Oh, have another cup of tea and be quiet. I don't want to be quiet. I want to talk. I'm tired of waiting here listening to that blasted wind and the roar of the water down there below. Why did you send for Dr. Sterndale? Because he is an authority on obscure African poisons. Poisons? Why are you interested in poisons? Watson, there are two striking points in common in both cases under observation. Yes? In both cases, the atmosphere of the room had a curious effect on the persons who first entered it. The housekeeper and the vicar's servant were both overcome, as was the doctor who was called in. That's right. I hadn't thought of that. The room was still stuffy when we entered it. Right. And in each case, there was combustion going on in the room. The fire in the first case, the lamp in the second, and the lamp was not necessary. It was still daylight when it was lit. Yes, but I still don't see... Uh, Something was burned in each case which produced an atmosphere causing strange toxic effects. An unknown poison. Good heavens. I believe we have a sample of that poison in the brown powder spilled on the base of the lamp. How are you going to prove it? I'm going to burn some of that powder. Notice its effect. Just a small pinch of powder. Yes. Uh, Perhaps you'd better leave the room, Watson. Leave you alone in here? Certainly not. I warn you, it's risky. Confound that wind. Come along, come along. Let's get it on with it and get it over. Very well. Uh, Place your chair opposite mine. Then we can watch each other for developments. If anything alarming happens, we can end the experiment. All right. Come on. I'm ready. Good. I put a pinch of the powder into our lamp. Oh, I say, what a... What a filthy smell. Hmm. Musky, subtle, nauseous. Listen to the wind, Holmes. I'm afraid. I don't know why. That wind. I can feel my hair rising. Holmes, do you see it? That cloud bank, whirling, black... And sinister. It's monstrous. It's concealing something, something too wicked to imagine. Holmes, it's coming nearer and nearer. Can't you smell it? Sulfur and brimstone. You hear that, Holmes? It's hoofbeats. Hoofbeats. I know what it is. I can see it. I can't stand this. It's too terrible. Holmes! Watch it for the love of heaven. Don't get in. Don't breathe. I'll smash the window. I'll smash it. That's better. Breathe in, Watson. Breathe it in. It's good, clean air. Oh, why, Joe, what an arrow escape. I had no idea it was so powerful. I thought I, I, thought I saw... I, thought I know. I, uh... It's a poison that affects the nerve centers of the imagination. The strain is enough to kill a man or drive him crazy. Hello, there's someone knocking at the door. Oh, so, so that's what I heard. Air yeah, seems cleared out. Good thing there was a high wind. I'll close the shutters oh, and draw the curtains. Watson, can you open the door now? Yes, I think so. Shoo, my... My knees are still shaking. Good evening, Mr. Holmes. You sent for me? Yes. Come in, Dr. Sterndale. Come in. You you look rather pale, both of you. Yes. We've uh, just been conducting a little experiment with the poison that killed Tregenis. You? Yes, Dr. Sterndale. Perhaps you'd like to tell us why you killed Mortimer Tregenis. I? Preposterous. You can't prove it? No. Let me tell you how you did it. You came over to the vicarage late this afternoon. You didn't want anyone to know you'd visited Tregenis. He was to let you in himself. But how could you attract his attention? You brought some pebbles with you, pink pebbles, from a heap beside your house. You threw these at the study window, where you knew Tregenis was working. I found some of these pebbles on the windowsill. Tregenis came downstairs, let you in himself. You had a talk with him, made him light his lamp placed a pinch of the poison powder in the flame and left. You're... You're right, Mr. Holmes. I did kill Mortimer Tregenis. But I'm not guilty of the other atrocity. I swear I'm not. I believe you, Dr. Sterndale. But you know who did it. Perhaps you'd better tell us about it. Very well. It was Mortimer Tregenis. What? He admitted it before I... before he died. Mr. Holmes... I've been in love with Brenda Trekennis for many years. We were to have been married when my work in Africa was finished. I've lived so long in places where man is a law unto himself. He killed Brenda in cold blood. He killed her. I have nothing else to live for. By heaven, I'd do it again. 
How did Mortimer Tregenis get hold of the poison? It was something unusual, almost unknown. Yes, it was powdered pes diable. Pes diable? Devil's foot, eh? Yes, a root found in Africa. Shaped like a foot, half human, half goat-like. I have the only specimen in England. And you showed it to Tregenis? Yes, he came over the other afternoon when I was packing. He was interested in my African curiosities, particularly this powder. How he took it, I can't say. I thought no more of the matter until I received the vicar's telegram and learned how they died. I returned at once. I, looking into the tragedy, I was convinced Mortimer Tregenis was the murderer, that he'd done it to gain control of the family fortune. There was the crime, but what was to be his punishment? What jury would believe such a fantastic story? No. I decided to take the law into my own hands. Perhaps if you ever loved anyone, you'll know how I felt. Hmm. Dr. Sterndale, what were your plans when you set out for Plymouth? I had intended to bury myself in Central Africa. My work is only half finished. Go and finish the other half, Dr. Sterndale. I do not feel called upon to prevent you. What a gruesome story, Dr. Watson. Yes, next to the famous Hound of the Basketball Adventure, that was the most gruesome experience that we ever had. There's just one thing I'd like to know. What did you think you saw in that cloud of smoke? Mr. Bell, you will have to believe me when I tell you it was too horrible to mention. Just to think of it is enough to make my blood run cold. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, Dr. Watson will be back to tell us about next week's story. Girls, Powers models are famous for their beauty and charm. And one of their most outstanding characteristics is their glorious, shining, bright hair. Now, here's how they keep it so shiny. Powers models use Cremel Shampoo. This amazing, beautifying shampoo has been especially developed to actually glamour bathe each tiny strand of hair, revealing all its natural, glossy luster. Yes, and don't forget, Cremel Shampoo is wonderful for washing children's hair, too. Of course it is, because there are no harsh caustics or chemicals in Cremel Shampoo. And its luxurious, active foam thoroughly cleanses scalp and hair of all loose dandruff as well as the dirt. Girls, if you could only see how Powers Models hair fairly radiates natural glossy highlights, I'm sure you'd want to try Cremel Shampoo right away. You can get a bottle at any drug counter. K-R-E-M-L, Cremel Shampoo. <laughs> Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.